Hey everybody, welcome to another unboxing video. Today we have Castles of Mad King Ludwig by Bezia Games. What's inside that box? Let's find out. So today we're checking out Castles of Mad King Ludwig which, by the way, uh, has climbed the ranks on Board Game Geek rather quickly. Uh, this game came out towards the beginning of this year, end of last year in that area, and it's already up to number 60. And games like this are a fresh change from the usual fare, such as slaying dragons or killing ghosts or building an empire. This is somewhat of a different theme and I think a lot of people are happy when games like this come out because it shows that there is still originality in board games. In this one you play an architect who is commissioned by uh, King Ludwig to build um, rooms in a castle and every room is going to be different every castle I should say is going to be different and you will score points based on what he asks you to uh, make so let's see what's inside here uh, we have a little deck of cards and these cards uh, let's see what's inside this little package here cards are very nice by the way they're not cheap they are very Expensive feeling, sorry. Very expensive, very good quality. I don't know if that comes out, but it has that woven fabric that I love so much. And uh, I'm not sure what these cards are. Okay, well, they have denominations on them 200, 300. These must be the room cards. Those are the 50 room cards that are listed in the table of contents. Then we have the bonus cards. These bonus cards, I believe, are given to each player. I think each player chooses two bonus cards or has a bonus card in their hand at the beginning of the game that they don't reveal to anyone else. And that's like their little secret uh, bonus that they are working on. And the other players have their own secret bonuses and they're working on it. For instance, here you're going to score two points at the end of the game for every recreational room. Um, and like I said, this would be hidden from the other players. You would know and you can check every so often, but they won't know. Again, if you're the type of player that doesn't play cards close to their vest, so to speak, the other players will figure it out and try to attempt to um, prevent you from getting your uh, bonuses. And that's done in the bidding section of the game. The bidding section of the game works like this. Each player will take a turn being the architect and the other players will then bid on the diff different rooms that uh, come up and again you can make each room as much as you want as the master builder and if you know your opponent needs a particular um, room well then this which is your uh, where you're going to put your room stacked underneath each number, you'll put that room under the most expensive because each round that you play that you're the architect, the other players must pay you the money for that room. So if you know your opponent needs, let's say, a staircase, and as you're laying out your different rooms, and let me give you a look at a quick look at what the rooms look like. Here are the sheets. I haven't punched them yet, obviously. I just opened the box. But say, for instance, one is a drawing room, and then we have a dungeon. Let's get this out of the way real fast. I can show you real quick. You would place these then under each of these. And let's say, for instance, I know uh, that I that my opponent needs a drawing room. Well, I wouldn't want to put it priced too low because I know my opponent will. A, buy it, and then buy it at the, uh, the cheaper price. So what I would do in the game is to make it priced higher and perhaps 
high enough so that they'll buy it and you'll get the money, but not too high that they wouldn't buy it, again, unless it's towards the end of the game and you know that they absolutely needed to win the game, then you would decide then. So here is your, uh, your board where you would place the rooms, each one would take their turn, each person would take a turn um, and do this uh, each round. Here's your first player marker. Uh, these are, like I said, all the rooms, and there are a lot of them. Uh, incidentally, I want to point this out because I do like to look at the quality of things. These are not very thick. They are made of cardboard. They are not very thick. So they, I think in a situation like this, you'd have to be very careful with these, with these uh, pieces of cardboard. I've seen much better. Um, these are not thick at all. Keep that in mind when you're playing the game. Um, they are not thick whatsoever. Okay, so with that said, those are the different rooms. And, you know, the game is played as such. You would connect rooms depending on what the king wants. And that's decided, uh, you know, by drawing these cards as well as your bonus cards. And you would then build... Uh, his dream castle. You can actually even have a basement um, as well, different floors, and that's shown by a set of staircases. I don't know if I can hear it. Here we go. Here are the staircases. If you can see that, there you go. Here we have other rooms like greenhouses, and here's a forum, and this is the gallery of mirrors, and the nine, there's a bowling alley inside the and that would fall under the recreation um, category, I'm sure. So that, uh, that's what the game consists of. And here are hallways that connect. Uh, sometimes you may have um, something that says not to build recreation rooms next to bedrooms for obvious reasons. And you would then try not to do that because you wouldn't score many points uh, at the end of the game for that. There are situations like that and what else comes in okay we also have your uh, bag of baggies for all your pieces here are your player markers that you would use and there, there are foyer ti uh, tiles always wanted to say that foyer somewhere in here I'm not sure where uh, let's see okay well this is part of the setup where you would actually I think at the beginning of the game, you, uh, you would randomly select certain rooms and stack them up on these punch cards, and it shows the different values, 600, 500, 454, because each of these tiles on the reverse side have values on them. They include values, and based on the values, that's where you will uh, set them up on your playing field. I don't see... I'm sure they're here, and I'm sure I'm just not seeing them. But in any event, you do get foyer tiles, and the foyer tiles match each person's color. Perhaps there are these, I don't know. Looks good, and like I said, the theme is rather different than what most people are used to, so I'm sure it'll be a, uh, a, a breath of fresh air for a lot of people that are stuck playing the same games over and over, whether you're delving in dungeons, or uh, building civilizations, or laying down tiles. This is a uh, breath of fresh air, as they say. So that's uh, the Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Looks great. I would assume it plays just as great, based on the reviews that I've been reading. And uh, uh, enjoy the game, if you do decide to get it. And uh, I'll see you soon and enjoy playing games.